In this video, I want to show you how to get the best settings for printing the 3D printed RC outboard. I'm going to show you how to get the files for printing the 3D printed RC outboard motor. Uh, you get them two ways. First way is going on my YouTube channel. If you click on this RC outboard boat testing video, and then if you scroll down to the description, there's a link right here to the files. The files are available for free on my website. So here's the download page. Shameless plug, if you like these free files and you like what I do and you wanna see me do more, consider um, donating to me. Uh, it just helps me make more videos and keeps me uh, able to make these files available for free. So any tips, and I've gotten actually uh, quite a few already. So thank you to everybody who's done that. Um, also consider subscribing to the, my YouTube channel. Uh, that way you'll see all the, the content first and you'll get the availability to the files um, first priority. So if you click on the click here files, these are all the uh, STL files. So on this main page, these EH files are all that you'll need. So there's seven total. And then if you want the stand that holds the motor so you can test in, the, in an aquarium, you can go into the thrust stand folder and then you can download these as well. The other way to get it is if you go to my website, if you go to www.ethoeflar.com, it'll bring you to my website. And then you can, the first picture here is for the 3D print files and it brings you back to that same page. All right, let's start with the uh, settings. Let's go through the model and look at some of the, the prints. So this is my SOLIDWORKS model that I drew of the outboard. So these are where the files originate from. And let's start with one of the more interesting ones. Let's start with the actual lower unit itself. So I'm gonna open this up, show you guys what it's like. This uh, file is definitely the most complicated. If you can print this one, you can do any of the files um, on this project. And this is, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you, this is a pretty intricate little pr uh, print. It's gonna test the tolerances of your printer. Obviously we've got a lot of the, uh, you know, precise locations, we've got bearing holes, right? So a bearing goes in here. There's another identical one down here for another bearing, right? That supports our vertical shaft, right? And then we've got this other bearing fit. So we've got another two holes, one here for another bearing and one in the back. And that's for the horizontal um, shaft that goes in there. So those are pretty tight tolerance. Um, you know, when you're going to install these, you're gonna want clean bores on that. And I'm gonna show you how to get that. Some other small details, if we work from the bottom up, you, these are the little holes for the uh, heat inserts, okay? So you may have to, uh, depending on you know, how good your printer is, you may have to drill those out slightly with a small drill bit to get the uh, heat inserts to go in nicely. Let's look, uh, keep going up to the top. This is the slot, the um, attachment feature for the, what I call the whale tail. That's the anti-ventilation plate that stops you from sucking air uh, when you go full throttle from, from uh, standing still. Uh, super important or else your propeller will suck air and you'll have horrible hole shot. So this is a really important piece to get right. You can see there's a little detent here for where you uh, push the whale tail on and that holds it in place. Trust me, I found that out the hard way. We need that detent. I've lost a lot of these uh, little clip pieces in there. So uh, let's keep going up. Next, you've got the mount for where the, the uh, outboard attaches to the boat. So this is kind of like a yoke and it's got holes going through it. And so there's an identical piece on the boat that I will release soon. Um, and I've got a boat I'm working on that I will uh, release. Uh, and so what this is for, the, a pin goes through here, a three millimeter uh, stainless steel pin, and that's what holds it onto the back of the boat. So that's another uh, precise little thing. And then if we look down at the top, we've got a lot of things. So we've got these circles out here. So these are for the uh, six millimeter by two millimeter magnets to get the clamshell for the uh, cowling to fit on. Okay, so that's what goes in there. And those eventually get, you'll super glue those in later when you do the build process, but only in this video, we're only focusing on actually putting it together. Uh, you've got a hole. So this is where a three millimeter by 25 millimeter long bolt goes through. This is where you drop in the nut. And you'll notice there's a little gap here. When you put the 3650 size brushless motor in here and you tighten this uh, bolt, it squeezes the motor and that gives it uh, a nice tight fit and it keeps it secured in there while you're running. So it keeps it from spinning. All right, so that's some of the detail. Let's go into the actual print settings. 
uh, I am using a Creality Ender 3. Um, settings might vary for your printer uh, specifically. I am using Prusa Slicer also. Uh, I tend to favor Prusa Slicer over Cura. just tends to work a little bit better for me. Um, one of the things you want to be doing for all of it, all these prints, I highly recommend PTG. I don't recommend PLA. Um, ABS should probably be fine for you. Um, the reason being that the PLA is going to be um, not as ductile, so it's not as springy as the PETG, right? PETG can take a beating, and uh, you may have seen this. PLA is very brittle, and it has a tend to shatter, um, tendency to shatter when it hits things. So if you're using the uh, 3D printed outboard and you hit a rock, right, PLA might bust off and just snap into a couple of pieces. So I recommend doing it out of PETG or ABS. Um, like I said, I'm using a Creality Ender 3. I've got some of my own uh, profiles for this. Um, they're pretty much the stock profiles. I, I got no, there's no magic or anything in here. Very standard profiles, but um, can't go wrong with a 0 0.20 millimeter layer height. I'm using 0.4 millimeter nozzles. So I'll click this. Um, I got my generic PETG model in there. I think I'm printing it. Let's check 235 degrees on the nozzle with an 85 degree bed. All right. Um, I'll go through some of the support stuff in a minute, but let's go ahead and open our model. So let's go to import and we'll go to the STL and we will grab the outboard V1.1. That's the version we're on as of this video. All right. And the first thing we're going to have to do is position this on the bed. So let's grab this lower surface down here. So we're actually going to print this thing. It's going to look upside down. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's clean that up on the bed. So we've got that facing upside down just like so um we're gonna i do not recommend using these supports um so sometimes it defaults to on build play only don't do this if you do this you're gonna not support the things that we want to support um the same thing don't put supports everywhere you'll end up with supports in places that you can't get them out of um so that's i didn't design the files to have everywhere support so what we got to do is we gotta use support enforcers so go ahead and turn that on for us we're gonna click on the model and then we're going to use this button down here, paint on supports. Okay, if you haven't used this before, definitely recommend checking out some videos on it. Very helpful tool. This can be used to place supports exactly where you need them. Now, we're going to do this from the top down. It's a little bit easier that way. The first thing we're going to support is we want to put supports in these bearing bores. Okay, we want these to come out nice and round and we don't want them to be sagging. So I'm going to put a little bead there. And then I'm going to put another bead on the inside of this bore. Notice how I'm not touching anything out here on this surface. Okay, I'm gonna go, you'll see when we generate supports why. I'm gonna go on the inside and I'm gonna paint that other part of the surface there. Right up here, just a little dot, boom, got that. Okay, okay. All right, so we don't need any supports in this cavity. That'll print just fine. You can if you'd like. I don't usually do anything like that. The other place, don't be, you'll be tempted to put supports in these holes. Do not do that. We don't need it. Those are for the heat inserts to keep that cover on for the uh, gearbox. Next, we keep going downward again. Uh, the next thing we're going to support is the overhangs for the hinge. So we're going to start with this top one. We want this to print nicely. So go ahead and support that. Nice. And you don't have to color in the whole surface with this tool. Um, you just have to get a majority of it and it will, Prusa Slicer will fill in the rest. I'm going to do the same thing on the lower surface for the hinge. All right, nice. And then we're going to go in here. We need to support all of these, um, these bores or else kind of, they'll print kind of funky. So we're going to start with this one, this outer for the motor. Let's move my camera. There we go. All right, that one's good. I'm going to keep stepping down. Do this one. The ladder to the third level. And finally, I'm going to switch to a little finer tool so that I don't paint the inside of this surface. I just, want, I just want to hit this bore for that bearing. I don't want to hit inside the hole. All right, we'll touch up there. Do a little more touch up up here. Just make sure this gets all nice. Very cool. All right, and that is all you need for support. Do not fill in the supports for the magnets, okay? Otherwise, you'll have a heck of a time getting those out. And then you don't need to put supports in this uh, the, the bolt hole. Neither do you for the, for the nut that goes there, so don't put any supports. So that's all you need. Um, all right, 
So let's hit slice. Actually, so one thing I forgot to mention, let's talk about uh, infill. Uh, I recommend probably like a 15% to 20%. You know, you can obviously go, go more. Um, you'll get more strength. It'll be heavier uh, and it'll just take longer. So, you know, I think 20% infill is a good place to start. Um, I'm partial to, uh, as far as infill goes, triangle. Um, I know there's a lot of these. Uh, grid, I tend to like just because it's simple. Um, a lot of people like the gyroid. Gyroid's cool. Uh, if we go to layers and perimeters, you're going to want a, uh, a minimum layer uh, or um, shell perimeters of about four. So go with that. Tops, bottom, seven, and five I've got. Uh, let's go back to our model. So that's what we've got. So we got four layers for the per uh, four perimeters, and we got seven top layers and five bottom layers. 20% infill. We've got our PTG, um, and then we've got a 0 0.20 millimeter layer height. You can go smaller than this, like a 0.16 or a 0.12. It's just going to take a lot longer. I don't recommend going any higher than a 0.20. All right, let's hit slice and see what we get. All right, so our slice finished. Let's see how we did. So a couple of comments here on this. So you can see we've got supports for this bearing hole. I actually touched this up a little bit too much. See how it made this support tower? I actually don't want that at all. See how it nicely it, it put the support inside of this uh, inner bore and it didn't put anything ex like extra? That's what I kind of want to see. So I'm actually going to go back to my model, go back to the, the uh, paint on supports. All right, I'm going to go under here. And I believe sometimes what happens is if you get, see how there's a little bit of the blue on the chamfer? I'm actually going to go back and erase this. So I'm going to use a very small fine brush. I'm going to hold shift and left click. And I'm going to erase that a little bit. All right, let's re-slice. See how this comes out. Do, do, do. All right, cool. So now you can see that that tower has been removed. We we don't want to see that tower back there. That looks really nice. Let's keep going. We can see that the supports for our hinge are nicely in place. That's what we want to see. We want to get that nice support for those so they don't um, start to bend over when during printing. And then finally, we've got the infill for the bore, as you can see that's filled in. Let's go from a layered layer uh, height down. Let's check this out. All right, one of the next things we wanna notice, this, the lower unit of this, the lower part of this is the is the most stressed area, right? Because you got all the speed going through there, you're hitting rocks and stuff. Notice that you can see the four perimeters we've got. You can notice see the uh, triangular infill. This is um, a little bit more sparse. You know, check out how hollow we are with 20% infill. I'm gonna show you a tip next. We're going to strengthen this. I'm gonna show you how, but right now I'm just checking to make sure that my supports are all in the right spots. You can see I've got that, actually if we go up. First we start with the bearing board. Look, there's the supports for that. Nice, the secondary bore, tertiary bore, and finally that fourth bore for the motor. So that's got all the supports for it, very nice. All right, let's go back to our build plate. And now I'm gonna show you another advanced tool in Prusa Slicer. What I want you to do is click on your model with the left click, okay, make sure it's highlighted. And now we're gonna do a right click and we're gonna go down to add modifier. We're gonna add a box. It's easier this way. I'll show you how, why. All right, so now look, we've got this little greenish box. What this is gonna allow us to do, I'm gonna actually drag this up and I'm gonna expand it make it a little bit bigger, okay, a little bit taller. Grab that box and we're gonna move it over our print. Now, what I wanna do, the reason I'm doing this, I want to strengthen all of the area from the bottom of the hinge upward up because I want, that's the most um, stressed area, right? That's gonna get hit by stuff. Uh, you got all that, that torque getting put through there. So we wanna make sure that's as strong as possible. Now, what I'm gonna do with this box is I'm going to uh, make it cover all the way down to basically just a little bit above that lower hinge. That's okay. And it doesn't matter how tall this is, as long as it captures the entire print. It also doesn't matter if it's off center, but just we'll do it anyways. We'll center that. So see how, oh, actually not too much. All right, that's good enough. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cl keep clicking on our box. We're going to right click again. So you see that? Right click. And now we're going to go to layers and perimeter. 
So in the right hand uh, menu, you'll see generic box, layers and perimeter. Check this out. We can up the amount of perimeters on this um, as much as we want. Now, like I was saying, I want a lot of strength down in here um, because this is the most highly stressed area, but I don't want to put 10 layers everywhere. Then this print would be take forever and it would be too heavy. So I'm this is this uh, this trick is going to apply 10 uh, perimeters only to the the section of the print inside of our box is kind of neat. So we'll get four perimeters, 20% infill below that box, and then everything above that will get 20% infill, 10 perimeters. And you can uh, change the both of those settings. You can change layers and perimeters as well as the infill, but we're only going to change the perimeter. So we're going to bump that up to 10. And let's reslice. All right, awesome. And now what we can see is if we go and look back at our model, start from the top down, if we start moving downward, look how much more dense the the uh, that uh, those perimeters are now. We've got going to get a lot of strength in there. It's going to be really nice. And you really need this this extra strength. Look how thin this one section is right here. You know, I was really pushing the boundaries of, of what we could do, you know, what we could fit, <laughs> trying to make this as streamlined as possible, right? Like if you're looking dead at this from the front, uh, you want that area, that cross-sectional area, to be as small as possible. Well, obviously, you've got to sacrifice something. So you're going to sacrifice strength or printability. Um, it's still printable. It's just you know a little bit weaker there. So that's why we're going to keep uh, up these uh, these uh, perimeters. So now there you have it. You've got your uh, fully ready to go print. Now you can take this over to your printer and slice it up. Um, not slice it up. You can uh, print it out. All right, next, let's go back to the SOLIDWORKS model to show you some more detail here. So let's print the next most complicated print. So second most complicated, it's the cowling. Let's open this up and show you what that looks like. Okay, pretty simple seeming. I guess the only thing that's difficult about this is the text on the side. I'll go into some detail about that. And you've got some relatively flat horizontal surfaces on the inside of this. Um, Nothing major going on here. You just want to get this looking nice. So let's get into the slicer and, and uh, show you how it's done. All right. So now we are going to import our cowl. We're going to do that next. So we're going to go back to our file that we downloaded and it'll be the cowl v1.0. All right. First off, I'm going to grab my model. I'm going to flip it face down, upright on the bed, just like that. Some notes about this. Uh, most of it's pretty simple. We do have some text on the side, right? We're trying to get that, that Racing 400 logo on there. Um, we're also trying to get this pass through. These are where the wires for our brushless motor are gonna pass through. Another feature back here, we've got this line, some of this detail feature. We've got that swoop on the side, and then we've got this overhang. Um, this is kind of a recreation of where the air intake on the actual outboard is. So you can see that. On the bottom, we've got these holes for the six millimeter by two millimeter magnets. Okay, and then on the inside, we've got a fairly um, horizontal overhang. So that might be some, uh, give us some, some trickiness. So I'll show you where we'll use supports on here. Uh, let's start with the first thing. So I'm gonna grab my model, click it in. I wanna start with my, my supports. I'm gonna do kind of what I did for the lower unit where I'm gonna use support for, for support enforcers only. All right, I'm gonna go under here. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger, about two. And let's try even three. All right, and then we're gonna paint on supports on this middlemost section where the text is. All right. And the reason being is we wanna support that that horizontal, most horizontal section. All right, we're done with that. And we're gonna come over here, we're gonna shrink our paintbrush, and we're just gonna paint in a little bit of support. Oops, that's messy. Let's try that again. Zoom in a little bit, try a little bit better. Nice, and we just want to put a nice support there on that edge. All right, same thing as ever, 20% uh, infill using a 0 0.20 millimeter layer height. Uh, I recommend nothing greater than 0.2. Definitely if you want that text to really stand out and pop, go you know, lower, maybe like a 0.12, potentially even a 0.08. Um, play around with that. I've had good luck with a 0.2 and 0.16. Same thing is the unit, lower unit. 
we're going to go to our four perimeters, seven um, top layers, five bottom layers. Doing this at our PTG again. Let's hit slice and see what comes out. All right, we've got our model all sliced up here. And this is how it came out. Let's take a look. Oddly enough, look at how I put these little support towers here. That means I screwed up my support enforcers. That's okay. We'll go back and fix that in a second. Text looks like it's going to print out pretty good. You can see the layer lines there. Everything else is going to print out pretty good. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the lower unit is the use of, of a skirt. I, I really don't like to use brims on these prints when I'm trying to get a nice flat finish. Um, I find that when you use the brim, it unless you're really good at removing it after the print, um, it can make the, the bottom side of this print look pretty ugly. So I'd rather just leave that to the printer to get a flat finish on it. So if we go to our print settings, go to skirt and brim. Um, the only thing I'm going to want, I'm actually going to turn no brim, and I'm going to go to loops. I kind of like the loops to get it a primer. It lets you um, dial in your printer if you don't have an auto bed leveling um, build plate. All right, so I'm going to do that, and I'm actually going to go back to see it changed because I turned off the brim entirely. I'm going to go look at my support enforcers. Notice how I've got a little bit of blue up here. I'm going to hold shift, left click. I'm going to erase a little bit of that. I'm actually going to erase a little bit in the corners too. Like I said, I don't want those weird supports, um, support towers jumping out. Let's re-slice. Nice. You can see that's already looking a lot better. Almost done. And boom, there you go. So we don't have that weird uh, like um, artifact down here of, of us uh, getting that support for that tunnel. Let's go from the top down. Let's take a look at this. Looks pretty good. Okay. And you can see that right when that most horizontal section comes in, we've got the support. And okay. that way we don't have to do the entire thing. It saves us some time. Um, with four perimeters, because this is a pretty thin print, it's going to print about basically 100% infill. Um, that's fine. It's going to be a pretty um, high detail print anyways, so it's going to be long anyways. So it looks like about 4 hours and 51 minutes for my print, so you should be around 5 hours with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Alright, and that one's ready, so now let's uh, send that to the printer. Okay, for the next print, let's do the whale tail on the back. Let's open that up. This doesn't really have anything special to it, is relatively flat on one side. That's the side you'll print down on the bed. On the top, it's got a little fillet around the uh, perimeter, and then it's got a notch. This is where it clicks into place on the lower unit, and then you see these little detents. That's what um, those little bump outs keep it attached and keep it from flying off of the outboard. So let's go into Bruce Slicer now. Okay, let's go and open our model. Click on the whale tail. Now, if you look at this, you'll notice that one side is flatter, one side's got a chamfer we, or a fillet. We want the fillet facing up. So let's put this face down on the bed, like so. And then for this, it, because it's so such a thin print, it doesn't matter anyways, but you got 20% infill, you got the four perimeters. Um, no brim for this one and no supports. There's nothing to support, so it doesn't really matter. So let's hit slice. And I've got that um, skirt just to, you know, Adjust if you're uh, auto if you're not if you're manually <laughs> leveling your bed rather, so you can see those four perimeters and then basically it's 100% dense the entire way. So this is a pretty quick print. Next, we want to get into some of the uh, the internal pieces. So I'm going to show you my cutaway of the model here. All right. The next couple pieces that we want to print are the couplers. These are the shaft couplers. These make the alignment between the motor shaft and the vertical upright. There's one thing you got to remember is that there's always going to be misalignment, especially on a 3D print. If you're trying to get precision like that, it's just not going to work out. Like the shafts truly won't be concentric to one another. And if you force it, you'll find that when you try to run something like this, if you try to use a solid coupling or you try to go one big shaft all the way through this, uh, the thing would vibrate like heck and it would run run pretty horribly and then something would inevitably, inevitably break right because if it's misaligned something is flexing to take that up the way I design these couplers it's easier if I hide this is they're basically like dog teeth okay and they uh, have some uh, degrees of freedom to them 
so that they can adjust to misalignment, right? Because all these prints, they're not going to be perfect. So let me show you how to print these. Let's open this model up. Some things about it. It's got these teeth on it. Okay, that's what we're going to use for the strength and transmit torque. It's got one little through hole uh, through the side of the thwart of the uh, main shaft. So this main shaft is where your three millimeter uh, vertical shaft is going to go through. Then what we do is we drop a three millimeter uh, nut inside this little slot. And then a grub screw goes through this hole and that's what tightens against the vertical shaft. So pretty simple, um, but yet really effective for this, uh, this print here. All right, let's go over to Bruce Slicer. And let's clear our, our build plate, delete, file, import, STL again. And we're gonna go to the EH coupler space, uh, oops, sorry, EH shaft coupler. All right, cool. So one of the things I wanna show you, uh, you may be tempted to put this down on the bed plate like so and print it like that. That's wrong, it's not gonna work very well for you. And the reason being, it's because you printed this way, the layer lines, let us let me show you. We printed this, the layer lines are going vertical. So guess what, guess where it's gonna break? These, your teeth are gonna snap off right at this layer because uh, it's the weakest in this, this orientation. So we actually don't wanna print that this uh, shaft coupler like that. We are actually going to print this on its side like so. See how, oops, did I do it? No, it didn't do it. Let me control Z. This is because it's a round part. It's gonna be kind of hard to uh, to uh, use these planar um, alignments. So I'm actually just gonna rotate this manually. So you use this rotate manual tool. And I want this through, um, this, uh, through hole on the side to face uh, upwards. So I'm gonna grab it, this tool, and I'm gonna rotate it skyward, just like that. Okay, see how I've got that on the bed? This is the orientation you should use. And now you might be saying to yourself, okay, we're gonna print something circular on a flat bed. You know, it's not really great. I would agree with you, but we don't really care how pretty this comes out. We just want it to be strong. So I'm actually gonna change, um, rarely I do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the support on the build plate only for this. Reason being, I want to support these these teeth. Uh, this other components like the um, this for this the uh, nut, three millimeter nut. Don't put any supports in there, or else it's going to be really hard to remove. This will print okay um, in that orientation. So will this inner uh, hole, this inner three millimeter bore. We're going to come back and clean that out with a drill bit. So it's okay if it's a little bit ugly. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, print settings. I want to go back to my layers and perimeters. I want this thing to be as dense as possible to, because it's gotta be super strong. So not super strong, but decently strong. So I'm gonna go back to my print settings. Either you can do that or you can turn, crank your infill all the way up. Um, I'm gonna just show you two ways. So I'm gonna just crank up my perimeters. Let's go to just, let's make it 12. 13's unlucky. Let's slice that. And you can see we've got support on the build plate. We're not supporting these holes. We don't need to, we don't want to, but we are supporting the teeth so that they don't kind of droop over. And also that support is making it so because we're printing a circular object on a flat bed, it's gonna come out a little bit nicer for us. Looks like it'll take about 35 minutes. And then let's take a look at the layers, see what we've got going on. And you can see I've got basically 100% density the whole way through. And that's what I wanna see on this one because it's gotta be strong. So nice. Uh, recommend, 0.2 millimeter layer height, um, no greater, probably 0.16 or 0.2 is your best bet for this. You may need to dial your sprinter to go a little slower to do this one because it's kind of intricate and it's just a small piece. I, I find that my printer, the smaller the piece, the slower I have to go with it. So that's that. You will need two of these. So let's go and I'll show you how to duplicate this. So if we go to add instance, boom, got two. And then if you use this button up here, arrange, it'll make it nice and clean for you. And then we can slice that up and now you're ready to go. There you go, there's the shaft couplers. All right, now we've only got three prints left. These are the easiest ones, I think. They're small, so you may need to go slower, but they're pretty easy. First being being this little spacer, this little top hat spacer. So this uh, puts the uh, shaft coupler in the right position. So you'll need one of those. You will also need this little tail cone, this little cute thing in the back. This is more of a, just a cosmetic thing. It just kind of looks kind of cool. Um, very small. That'll print pretty easily. 
And then finally you've got the door for the gear, the lower unit gear case. So this is also pretty easy. So I, you can print these all at the same time and I'll show you that. Now let's go over to Prusa Slicer. Let's open up import STL and I'm going to pick shaft coupler, oh sorry, uh, the coupler spacer rather, the tail cone, and what else did I say? Oh yeah, the, the hatch. All right, let's open that up. All right, so let's like that. So let's start with this little tail cone piece. Let's align that to the bed. You know, why aren't you working? Do, do, do. There you go. All right, so let's put that one, the tail cone down, face down. Same thing with the shaft spacer, face down like that. And then we're going to push this. This is the hatch. We're going to put it so that the little bump out is facing downward like so. All right. And if you're, you know, if you want, you can print all three of these at the same time. It might be better for you to just print them one at a time in case you get a failure or something. Um, since these are kind of like little tricky little parts. Uh, let's see. One thing I want to do, we don't have, there's not a lot of surface area touching the build plate on these. So we may want to do a brim. Let's go ahead and do a brim on all of these. So let's go to our print settings, skirt and brim. We can do a skirt too. No problem there. Let's do a brim. Let's do a outer brim only. Five millimeters, a little excessive. Let's try three millimeters. Let's go back. 0.20 millimeter nozzle. Let's go to, I think for this one, we want to go a little bit, um, I want to go a little thinner on the layer. Let's do this optimal detail slow. It comes in Bruce Slicer. Let's transfer our current settings. And so we've got a 0.16 millimeter layer height with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Printing these out of PETG. Uh, we don't need any supports, none, don't want those. 20% infill, brim, that's fine. These parts are honestly so thin that the infill won't even be a, a factor here. So let's slice this up, see what we get. All right, that looks pretty decent. Nice, so we'll have that nice brim to get us secure to the bed, and then we'll print that up. Let's take a look at our layer heights. We can see we're pretty much getting full layer density on this. So no, uh, it does, it's going to default to perimeters on this because they're so so small. All right, that's awesome. So that's all you need. So obviously you just have to rip that brim off. It should be pretty easy for you. These parts will take about 25 minutes. So pretty fast on that. Don't, um, I don't recommend any supports on side of the inside of these holes. We can come back and clean those out later with a drill bit. So, all right, awesome. So that's all those that you need there. Okay, here are the finished prints right off the printer. Tilt this up a little bit so you can see better. So the prints came out really nice. Everything looks really clean. So we take this off. I actually already installed the magnets on this, but the magnets fit in nice up here. They press fit in. The nut has a nice uh, clearance for that. Same thing with that bolt that we used to tighten and clamp to the motor. Uh, the hole for the three millimeter shaft, you will need to take a three millimeter drill bit and ream that out to get it to fit nicely. So just keep that in mind. But the bearings, these bores all look really nice. Uh, the whale tail came out really good. I already snapped that into place on it and I secured it with a little bit of super glue. The door for the lower unit cover fits into place really nice. As do, um, if you actually, if you look at the, the bore for that lower bearing, so that looks really nice too. Very clean print overall, very happy with that. Then if we look at the cowling, you can see that the text is, is nicely legible. That came up pretty good with a 0 0.20 millimeter layer height. Same thing with the magnets on the bottom of that. The supports did a nice job of supporting these overhangs. So this came out pretty clean. So we're all very happy with that quality. And then we've got the couplers. So if we look at this, the teeth came out really nice. The through bore, that looks good. You will need to also ream that out with a three millimeter drill bit. And then the nut, the spot where the nut gets pressed in, that was clean too. Looks really nice. And then these just kind of fit together like this. They're supposed to be loose to take up the misalignment. So that's cool. Those fit nicely. And then finally, just this little top hat spacer. Nothing really to say about that. Again, you may need to drill out and ream that hole with a three millimeter drill bit. So 
overall, very happy with these uh, results. And you should expect to get something similar. Uh, if you're having trouble, definitely go back and watch the video and see if there's anything you missed on the print quality or, or print setting. Otherwise, uh, leave a, a comment down below and we can try to help you um, troubleshoot and get through this. So another video coming soon uh, to do the assembly, to, to put all the parts in and go over the details for that. So please stay tuned and thanks for watching.